So far, we have a player that you can move back and forth and with the arrow keys, and we can push the control button to shoot projectiles. So let's make some targets that we can shoot with the projectile. All right, so I'm going to show you how to use um, instantiation to make bricks instead of having to do it manually. Now we do need an object to create a prefab of to be able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a cube and I'm going to back to um, reset so I know how large it is. Um, position, I'm going to move it right now a little farther away here. Let's, um, let's move it there. I just changed the Z, Z to 4. And let's make it um, um, a little taller, how about. So I'm going to make the scale Let's make the um, Y2. That'd be fine. Okay, so um, looking at this, actually, let me move the Z to 5. That might be nicer. Or even, let's see, 10. Hmm, I kind of, maybe something in between, 8. Why don't we go with 8, all right? So we've got this brick. And um, if I've got this, and I like just hit play, and I fire at it, you know, it can hit, but it doesn't do anything very fun. So what we're going to do is make sure that it is a rigid body and that it, apply, it um, is affected by gravity and all other physics. So um, let's add a, um, a material to it, make this look a little better, um, create material. call it brick color, and um, how about I'll make those um, kind of orangish maybe? That'd be all right. Kind of a red-orange. Okay, the brick color, can assign that. Okay, and then I need to make this a rigid body as well. So I need to click on the cube. I'm going to make it... Um, add a component rigid body. Okay, and then I should be able to hit this. Now when I hit play, there is a bit of a problem, right? There's no floor for it to, it to stop on. So I need to also add a floor in if I'm going to be doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and add another cube. I'm going to go ahead and make this. I'm going to name it floor so I don't get confused. Okay, and I'm just going to make it pretty big. So, oh, and let's make it um, reset. I am going to make it, let's go 100 by, a, whoops, 100 by 100. Okay, and um, uh, we notice everything looks like it's drowning. So let's um, do the position. Let's go negative one to drop it lower. Um, so this should be okay. Let's see. What if I do a negative? Okay, that's negative two. All right. So these will drop a little bit, but I think um, I think that'll be okay. All right. So now I'm not making this a rigid body because I don't want it to um, uh, fall. Also, so let's um, hit play. Now the brick falls a little bit, and that's okay. And then let's just see what happens if I shoot it. Oh, that's a lot more interesting, right? Okay, so now this is our brick, and instead of individually placing these, I can use loops to um, instantiate them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cube, let me call it um, brick, okay, and I'm going to drag it into assets to make it a uh, prefab, and then I'm going to delete it from um, the scene, okay. And if you recall, I think I liked my Z to be around 8, just something to remember. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I don't want to put the script in the player controller because that's going to be just the player. I want a setup script just to set the scene up. So I'm going to go ahead and make a brand new script. And let's call this game controller. Okay, so that's going to hold all the general game things. And in fact, I can go over here and create an empty game object and let's call that, um, I'll just call it game script so I can find it. I'm going to go ahead and 
and uh, assign that now while I'm thinking about it. All right, so I've got my game controller, and what I want to do is be able to instantiate my bricks. So inside of my class, but not um, inside of one of the methods yet, I'm going to say public transform, I'll call it a brick. Okay, so that is going to be the object we're going to be creating. And I'm not going to be updating anything at this point. I'm just going to get rid of that for now. But in the start, so when this game starts up, this game control will run, and this will happen one time. So what I want to do is instantiate a brick. So I can do that by just typing instantiate. I want to say what I want to instantiate. And I want to say where. So I'm typing the default here, which would be 0, 0, 0. And then I need to say the rotation. OK, so this uh, quaternion identity is really just um, setting the, the global location of things. Um, this is where I want my brick to go. Now, x, y, z. If I do 0, 0, 0, it'll be right on the player, because I believe that's where it's starting. So x, y, z, I think I liked it at 8. So I'm going to go ahead and put 8 in. So when I run this, it should make one brick at 8, z. So let me save this. Go over here. Now I've got my game script. And notice the game script now has a spot for brick. And it doesn't have anything to say what should be created. So I want to take my prefab and drag it over to that spot. So then it knows what it should be creating. So let's hit play and see if that works. OK, so notice that appears out of nowhere, which is great. Let's go ahead and, and shoot it. OK, good. So let's go ahead and um, make it so that it creates five bricks instead of me having to place them by themselves. So what I can do is put a for loop around it. In this, ca in this case, it would do five bricks. That would be fine. I kind of like spaces in between there. Um, OK. All right, so I've got my for loop, and it's going to loop five bricks. And at this point, though, it's going to, um, I can't have them all at the same place. I need to change something, and I want it to go across the um, x-axis. So what I'm going to do is use the i that's counting to help move it, and then I want some spacing. So what I'm going to do is make a, a variable up here. And I'm going to call it offset. And this will give a spacing of two units between each brick. So what I can do instead of this first spot, I can say i um, times offset. And what that will do is first time around, it would start at 0, x. Next time around, so because that would be 0 times 2. Next time it would be 1 times 2, so it would be at 2. Next time, 2 times 2 would be at 4. And so it would it would move along. So it's going to be a little off center to start with, but let's see how that goes. So it should do five bricks for me. Let me save this and hit play. All right. And so I should be able to go here and, and um, shoot them all down. All right. And I can change the number of bricks I want simply by changing this. So I could have it be 10 bricks, as simple as that. Now, I do want it to shift over. I don't really want it to be um, uh, in the just starting at 0. What I can do is um, adjust this number um, and um, and in this case, what I can do is um, I'm going to do a little thing. It'll do 
I times off set, and how about I'll, I'll subtract um, uh, 15 units off of it. So it'll just shoot, scoot over 15, because I think that would probably be a pretty good. You may have to just try it out, and we'll see how that works. And so what it does is it starts the starting point back a bit. If, it's, if this is 0, it'll start it at negative 15. And then if this is 2, then it would start at negative 13. So it would um, scoot it over. So let me um, save this and um, hit play, and it should be more centered this time. Oop, a little bit too much looks like. So what I could do is go here and adjust that. Let's try 10. Okay, that looks better. Oops, I hit stop. Okay, so we've got our, our bricks. I can shoot them. Okay. And one more thing that's kind of cool about this is you can then um, use that to do a whole mess. So if I wanted to, I could copy this. And let's say I wanted another row of them. I could then um, have this be the same, the X. But let's say instead of at 8, I want them to be farther away. So let's say I want the next set to be, um, let's say, I don't know if 12 would be too far away. Let's try 12 and see how it goes. I'm going to hit save, and this is the, the Z, so that's farther away from us. Okay, so now I've got them, and I can, I can uh, easily hit those like that. And if you wanted to, you could even stack them up um, simply by, here, let's make, um, let's make the second row have a double decker. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to leave all of that the same, except that what I can do is change the Y. Now, if um, my original bricks are too high, um, I want to raise them at least by 2. Now, here I'm just going to go by 2. And keep in mind that they're a little bit off the ground already. And I'll show you what, what happens if you have them collide by accident when they instantiate. Oh. I'm surprised they actually fell into place pretty well. Let me um, let me do this a little bit wrong here first. I'm I'm surprised it worked great. I like it though. Oops, hang on. Let's go F. If you um use a decimal, you need to put F in, otherwise it thinks it's a double instead of a float. Just a little C sharp thing. Let me hit play. So if I didn't quite do it properly, wow, and it's still working. That's amazing. Okay, let's um. Let's just go one. There we go. They can't handle it, and they kind of collide. Sometimes they explode more. In this case, it wasn't as fantastical. But um, if you instantiate something and things just like explode apart, look at the spacing, and it's very possible that um, they were too close together, and you may need to just increase the space. So let me go ahead, change it back, save. So now I've got um, this with double decker and a whole mess of other um, things to shoot down.